It's my last Katowice video here, and it's going to be my predictions for IEM Katowice. Who's going to make it through their groups? Who's going to be the shining stars? Who's going to be the disappointment? Who's actually going to win the whole darn thing? Let's go ahead and get into it, thanks to the help of Liquipedia, who has the groups as well as the schedule for the groups and everything else that you wouldn't ever see included. So here we go. Group A. Now, this group actually is, is a difficult one to call because there's a lot of possibly good moments for every single player here that not necessarily guaranteed for anyone. I do think Solar is the most reliable player in this group. So even though he comes in as a second seed, I think he's more reliable than Gumiho. So I would place him as first. And then I did say Gumiho would get second. I'm a big Gumi fan and I think he can absolutely pop off. And this is not the most difficult group for him. And then third was actually really difficult. Uh, between brain and heart, so it was difficult. Honestly, all of these guys have different reasons to be the heart choice, and I don't want to choose one or the other oh, over the other, but I think I did go ahead and choose spirits. So we talked a little bit about this in that talk show that I do. You can find the YouTube uh, video here on this YouTube. But I did go with spirit because not only is a strong Terran who's only gotten more consistently stronger, like he doesn't necessarily spike, but he doesn't really dip either. And he's just constantly been building up. He's also really good in Katowice's in particular. That seems to be where he proves that he has actually gotten that next level accomplished. And it's not, it's not a huge spike, but it is the next level accomplished. So the last two years have had some of Spirit's games be actually the most interesting of the tournament. Two years ago, I remember interviewing him after a couple of the really amazing TVPs with some of the Chinese Protoss. And then last year, he had that really sick best of five versus Cure, which I believe he, he unfortunately let go, but they were really, really great games. Really good testament to how fun the TVT matchup had become since 2022. So I'm gonna put him as third, because I think Poland, him being Polish, him being on the new team, Navi, is going to really keep his spirit up sorry guys uh and that he is going to get that third but here marine literally a top four if katavica two years ago can't disregard him scarlet when she plays consistently at her top level she can be even a favorite and so i think that scarlet can't also be just shoved aside there's always a chance but she's kind of been busy with some zero space stuff. Uh, the living situation as far as like Korea goes has had to change recently. It's, it's kind of difficult to say that she can secure a top three spot, but she's definitely in competition to do so. And then the last guy here is Trigger. He has been rising and continuing to improve his standing in the North American region, which also got combined with Lat Am in the last year. So. The fact that he still is a contender for that top two, beating Scarlet more reliably, actually taking it to Australia and PVPs as well, means that a lot of eyes are on Trigger. So that's cool and all, but to actually perform on one of the biggest stages as more of an up and comer still, that is a very tall ask. Group B, uh, which could be really called Group T, I suppose. All the Terrans are in here, apparently. We got four of them, a Zerg and then a lonely little Protoss who is coming in as a real underdog. Stats, of course, who I'm talking about. If you don't recognize the name Shin, I do not blame you. That is actually Ragnarok, who did get top four in last year's Katowice. Let's talk about who I think is going to make it out in uh, top three. I do still believe in Clem, even though he's looked a little shaky in the last couple of weeks. I'm a big, humongous believer in Cure. I think his average play is just so freaking solid that you can expect him to be in a round of eight of any tournament. And then it's more of a question if he's just pushing a little bit more to get farther. And then the third option is difficult. As much as I was a big fan, a big believer in Oliveira last year, again, even I was blindsided by the, the finals for sure. So I wouldn't just go ahead and jump to saying that he gets the third but as a super solid Terran always been a practice partner for a lot of these players as well plays in the Korean server at a very high level so on and so forth but to put him at third as a guarantee against the likes of Bunny who can be hit or miss he had a really great performance in Atlanta 2022 but then dips pretty hard after that and then kind of comes up and goes out comes up and goes out breaks his arm, whatever he does, um, <laughs> goes out. And he did make it into the Katowice tournament. So he's clearly playing well. And then there's the huge question mark of like how TVT actually looks since a lot of this group is going to be dependent on how your TVT is. 
I mean, he could be much better at TVT and I wouldn't know about it. Oliveira would be practicing with the Korean Terrans as well. Kira is actually probably the biggest proponent of the Cyclones that I've seen. He seems to do them all the time. Clem is not so much a believer in the mass Cyclone, 20-ish Cyclone versus Cyclone, but he loves the Medivac Cyclone opener. I mean, it could be all Cyclones. It could be people trying to out mind game the Cyclone player or vice versa. I don't know. I have no idea. And that's that's what makes it especially difficult to tell. Uh, Ragnarok uh, does deserve a nod as much as I do kind of rag on him a little bit. And I did last year, I believe, too. And he made round of four. But it is hard to place Ragnarok now Shin as he is definitely a very volatile player. You do really well in a Katowice or get to the finals of a GSL and then like palm out immediately after. <sighs> and he has such a spiky way of playing because he can be really aggressive that you don't throw him out of the top three uh, immediately. And then he has the, him and stats have the benefit of mostly proxying versus Terran, which is definitely something. And that is, that's just so hard. But unfortunately, I have to be real with y'all, that Stats is just so unlikely to do well here. You know, his Katowice qualifier run really was not the most difficult bracket. There was a little bit of luck as far as the matchups went for him. And just as a Stats, as statistics go, Stats is the underdog. He does also have the benefit of practicing one matchup, but I feel like that matchup is particularly difficult for the Protoss out there. I'm not saying it's imbalanced, just that, you know, Protoss will say like, yeah, it's kind of tough. And there's like four different types of Terrans to face too. Um, some more YOLO than others, some more macro than others. I think, you know, Shin could just blitz stats, easy peasy and a best of three. So I I mean, one thing I'm, I'm thinking is like Clement Cure get top two. And then stats is unfortunately the last player. But then everything else is a real freaking question mark. And I might have gone up with Oliveira. I might have gone with Bunny. I didn't go with Shin. I'm going to stick with that, I think. I, like, either Oliveira or Bunny, I want to say, gets third. And it's going to be really dependent on who has the better TVT. And that used to be a more simple question. You would go ahead and look at their stats and TVT and take into account a little bit, like, the play styles of their opponents. But now it is... It's not a coin flip, it's a dice roll. Like, what, what is happening in that meta, in that matchup, the more that people especially try and hide what they're doing, knowing they're in this group? I, I have no idea. <laughs> so yeah, either Oliveira or Bunny gets third. And we got Group C. Serral is the easiest call for first place out of any of these groups. He is the easiest call. I can kind of confidently say that Clem gets, well, not even really lately, right? Like, I think Cure actually gets first, I think is what I actually said. But it's something along those lines. But then I think Dark gets first, actually, in Group D, just with his play averaging out better over the last six months. But even that's not super, like, it's like, okay, well, something can happen, obviously. The rest of the players are great. But Serral, Group C, it totally is. 100%. It's more so the question, does he lose a map? Bjorn is one of the few players on this list who has actually taken a map from Serral in an offline tournament recently. And uh, yeah, so he gets first, for sure, 100%. Pretty much everyone agrees about that. And we have Bjorn, who I do think gets second, but Bjorn Estrella is a really interesting matchup a lot of the time. It goes back and forth. Both their play styles are kind of similar to each other as much as possible for two different races. I think it's going to be a really fun matchup. I hope we cast it. And then Kelazur, I did actually have the pleasure of talking with him for uh, the little lessons that I do for Katowice, and he had really good things to say about his plan for Group C. He also does feel confident, and it's a totally understandable confidence, but a realistic one, right? Like He's got plans versus Beyond. He feels like he knows how Estrella plays. Firefly is uh, kind of a one-trick pony. He's a very aggressive Protoss who plays a lot of Mass Gateway. So not to say that it's an easy play style to always win against, but you know what you're getting into. But, uh, you know, Serral, kind of a tall ask for, for Kelezer. And then Skillis is actually a difficult matchup for him too, but he's definitely got a plan. So I, I want to put Kelezer a little higher, you know, since taking that uh, lesson with him. That's obviously bias, but I really do think that he is a contender in this group because he could actually win a TVT versus Beyond. He took a map off Maru and almost won the third game actually in Atlanta. The Cyclone thing is a question mark. He absolutely could beat Estrella. He could absolutely beat Scalos and Firefly. There's, there's no one here besides Sarah where I'm like, calm down. <laughs> 
But that kind of goes for everyone in this group besides Sarah. Like, everyone can beat everyone here. With, I think, Firefly being the most undependable because of his play style. He's also going to one of his, like, his only international land, actually. And then there's a question mark as to whether he's done offline tournaments in China. So that's going to be a huge factor. Absolutely humongous factor going into this group. So that's why I got to keep him at six, unfortunately. Skillis is really motivated to do well. And he's a really good kid. And he's always been on the cusp of being the next best Protoss behind uh, the, the European Protoss, sorry. So like Max Pax and Showtime and then question mark and probably Skillis. So he could do really well because apparently he's also been practicing a ton for this. Estrella is the hope of North America. He's consistently the champion of North America. Uh, of the Americas, is that what it's called? His style can be a blessing, but also can sometimes be a curse. So I don't know. I'm really trying not to consider the bias and I can just talk to Kelizer to put him as third, but Serral first, Bion second, and then either Estrella or Kelizer is my feeling, but I really don't want to take out Skillis from the competition. I don't know. Oh, that's, that's a tough one to call as well. The group D, this would you think would be the hardest one. It is still difficult to call, but I feel like when people first looked at this, there was a lot of, wow, these are the best players in the world right now. These are the best matches we could possibly get. So many best of threes are going to be absolute bangers. And they could be, but they might not be the absolute bangers because we're watching the pinnacle of esports skill displayed. Some of these players, or all of these players, a lot of these players have a question mark as to their, are they 100%? Let me get more into detail here. I think Dark, as I said, has the best average as far as him just staying as powerful as usual. In the last six months, Maru had a time in which he might have even been getting surgery. We don't we don't actually know. So that affected all of his performance. He bombed at a GSL. His Atlanta performance wasn't very good. Rainer was particularly ticked by his results. Hero has had not much between Katowice and Masters Coliseum. So who knows exactly? And then there are two more players in this group, but it's really hard to talk about them the most because both these players are in for a world of hurts. Showtime has actually done good at Katowice's previously. He was, uh, but he got to run a 12 at the very least. And he could tackle PVP. He has really been doing well against Rainer, but not quite good enough to get the series win. His weakness is almost always Korean Terran, so I don't think he wins against Maru. And then Dark can be hit or miss. There's like a possibility Showtime pops up, but we're looking at this top four. Yeah, and, and then poor Cyan is like, he's a really cool player. And I think in any of these other groups, I would give him a lot more weight. Like if he was in group C, a lot more weight to that third place. Group B, sure. Group A, sure. I don't, I, you know, sorry guys. So yeah, Dark's probably my pick for number one, but then if Maru's playing as well as he was in some of his TVZs and Masters Coliseum, including his games versus Dark, then Maru gets first. Easy peasy, right? It's just that he's still a little bit of a, okay, are you back fully and completely in tomorrow form? Rainer also is a little like, well, are, you know, what are you doing? How's your practice going? Um, do you like CBZ again? So does he play the absolute best? I mean, I'm thinking yes, because he's been with so much practice, but you know, basically saying there's question marks. And then Hero has always been the most question mark. He, even when he was the most talked about Protoss, the most hoped for Protoss, and he was considered one of the potential champions of last year's IEM Katowice, there was always that fear. <laughs> he would just blink forward into a dozen lings and kill himself or do something a little too wacky that, you know, everyone's just like, well, that wasn't it. What, what is it? There, there's always that aspect of hero that can keep him tripping at the finish line. So you always got to be a little, little on guard as a hero fan, you know? But I think Dark being first or Maru being first, if Maru is really playing as well, Rainer being first, if he's been practicing as much and up to his top form, hero being first, I think is maybe the less likely of the four being first, but that doesn't mean he can't get through. So yeah, it could be everyone playing at maximum strength and it is some of the most technically sound StarCraft we ever see. It could be one person kind of having a bad day because they are, they are gonna be played over three days. So that could affect things. Travel, uh, sickness, you know, was a big deal actually in Atlanta. Like that could affect them. I don't know, I don't know. But I, I guess if I am going to give a hard statement, I would say top three remain top three here. Hero's the one that I have less confidence in staying in his good form and beating out these other players who are generally more consistent than him. But I really hope he makes it through. I don't know who I hope he makes it through over because I'd be cheering for all these guys, but 
yeah, Protoss, you know? Because I'm pretty sure I've only said one Protoss is potentially going to make the top three, so... So now, um, I guess we kind of have the round of 12, round of eights to a degree if you're doing the calculations on who I said was going to get first, second, and third. But then let's go ahead and just straight to the finals. Round of four was surprisingly difficult to predict. It also depends on how the seeding goes. My finals prediction could be impossible, or certainly if a semifinals prediction could have been impossible. But to go ahead and try and think, think of the finals, my gut did say Zergs a plenty. <laughs> you know, Zergs a plenty in the semifinals, and then maybe a ZBC in the finals as well. The Serral Rainer finals from two years ago was so freaking cool, though. I mean, I really do want to go ahead and just like preface any potential mirror matchup finals is like, it's not the worst thing, guys. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool, unless it's cycling for cycling. So like, yeah, yeah, oh, no, Serral Rainer could happen again, is what I'm trying to say. That absolutely could be the case. Maru, if he plays as good as he was playing versus the first time he was playing versus Serral, I could see making it to the finals and then getting uh, it, for Maru. This would be like I, I feel like we actually might see him tear up. Okay, legitimately, this this emotionless guy who's been known for that ever since he was a little kid. If he made it to the finals and actually won finally gets the Katowice crown. He makes up for last year. He gets a humongous, bigger than anything else he's done, an international tournament win. Not the global finals this time, to be fair, but still. I feel like there'd actually be some emotion there. And that'd be pretty freaking cool. So, ditto on Dark, just because while well, he should be playing in the next two tournaments after this, it's still a tremendous victory that has been uh, missed by him very consistently. Serral is the best guest. Serral is playing so freaking well right now. Serral is the best guest to make an appearance in the finals. And then if Clem is playing as well as he was playing in Atlanta, it could be another Serral Clem. Uh, well, this would be the finals this time, not semifinals. Those are the people that I'm looking at to make it to the finals, I guess. It's kind of like the people who could make it to the finals is Clem, Serral, Dark, Maru, Rainer are my guesses. So I guess that's kind of also my top four, obviously. Not too confident in anyone else. I know people are going to be like, give Solar some credit. Solar deserves a lot of credit, but he has struggled to make it to the finals consistently. Generally, like his roadblock includes Maru. He does meet him in the round of four, and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh sorry, guy. Sorry about that. Cure finally making this big international victory, I feel like, is so due that I really want him to do it as a very biased fan, but I struggle to think of that happening. He looks so amazing in Gamers 8. If Rainer wasn't just mu more amazing, <laughs> <laughs> he would have been the standout star for me. And then, you know, beyond, obviously, I think a lot of fans would cheer for that as well. Any North American presence would be cheered for tremendously. I think it's very realistic that we have an all foreigner semifinals. No Koreans. I do not think that's a crazy call nowadays. But I'm going to guess it's actually going to be rather even on the Korean and foreigner split. I am going to go ahead and guess that Protoss doesn't make it to the round of four and might not even make it round of eight. Just not not looking to be in their favor. I mean, they're coming in here with less representation to begin with. So, but yeah, I think that that kind of covers all of the the estimates. I think um, there's some real question marks. Generally, the skill level says about what you would expect if you've been watching StarCraft up to this point. Uh, as far as big disappointments go, again, Hero might be the biggest one, depending on his wackadoo style. Gumiho could be the biggest surprise, as he was in Yangshaping when he was playing very good StarCraft, not just his strategic mind showing off, but his mechanics as well. He could be a surprising upset. Oliveira could do the thing again, you know, the thing. That's who I would be looking for as far as the, you know, okay, no one was, was thinking about this and the, and the goods and the bads. And then everyone else will fall where they may. What do you guys think? Uh, and anything that I did not cover that you are dying to ask, please post below in the comments. I hope to see you all either in person in Katowice. Feel free to come up to me if I'm just walking around or at the talent signings or whatever it is. And online, if that's where you're also going to be watching this amazing tournament from. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to tune in February 8th through 11th, twitch.tv slash ESL underscore SC2 for IEM Katowice 2024.